The Hub is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises Inc. We've talked before about the emergence of artificial intelligence as a technology that could drastically change the world. A new company is seeking to help Guam begin to adapt and innovate in response. Outrigger AI offers educational seminars, which it says are specifically designed to equip businesses with the necessary skills to harness the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning. We spoke with company founder Christian Clements, who says they've also gotten an overwhelming response from students. And to cater to the growing interest, we'll be offering student seminars. Coming up, Jason Salas also joins us for a discussion on how to stay ahead of the AI curve, seize opportunities, and thrive in the evolving AI landscape. All right, hop everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Hub. I'm Esther DeCanto, joined by my colleague, Jason Salas. And uh, our guest this week is Christian Clemens, who is the uh, CEO of Outrigger AI. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to be here. All right, um, before we get started, uh, we are going to talk about AI, artificial intelligence, which has become a favorite topic here on The Hub. This will be the second show we've done on it in, uh, in several weeks, just because it's such a fascinating subject, not just for me, but for Jason and, and a lot of people, I imagine. So tell us a little bit about what Outrigger AI is and what you, your plans are for the company. Uh, so I um, have owned several different businesses in, uh, uh, in different industries, and I find myself in a unique opportunity to um, bridge, uh, you know, what's going on in Silicon Valley. You know, you might see uh, different apps coming out all the time. I mean, there's literally hundreds that come out every single week to do this, that, and the other thing. But they're just focusing on the tech. They're not really focusing on how do I apply this to my business? You know, um, how do I make money with this? How do I streamline my operations with this? Um, and so I'm a you know very practical person. Um, you know, did a lot of uh, like civil engineering and things in, in the past. So I want to know, okay, how do we do this? What are our what are my action items? This isn't a fun toy. It's it's something that's going to you know revolutionize business. So, uh, you know, Outrigger, I treats it that way. Yeah. And one of the things that you've got upcoming, you have a, some seminars that you've got planned for both individuals and uh, businesses? Uh, we do, yeah. So I wanted to, um, you know, to, to reach out uh, for the students as well. Uh, so first we're doing um, a, uh, one at the University of Guam we're doing, um, and that's a kind of an abbreviated version on Saturday. Um, you know, I, I think about students right now and I think, what would I be thinking if I was about to graduate and all of these things are changing? You know, is my degree going to, you know, uh, going to matter? And, and and I think, yes, yes, it very much so will. Um, but will you have to be able to use uh, AI tools, uh, you know, in order to to optimize, in order to, you know, to stay relevant with your your job? Yeah, you're, you're going to need to do that, too. So uh, as well as it's going to create a lot of new jobs, um, you know, people probably saw the uh, ad for three hundred and thirty five thousand dollars a year for a prompt engineer. Um, you know, that's that's an a, a new AI job that's uh, being invented. So, um, yeah, a lot, a lot to uh, to discuss at that one as well, too. I would assume I mean, too, there, that. There many, sorry, no, I, I would assume there are a couple of uh, guys that really bought into the whole I want to be a crypto engineer that are now like considering that as a uh, as a as a career path. Hopefully this one bears bears a lot more fruit and by all means uh it, it seems to lead in that path. Yeah. Yeah, it's very much so a, a generalist um uh, it's a generalist technology. So, you know, whereas crypto, you know, we can debate its merits. Uh AI it touches already touches and and will continue to touch everything um you know so it's it's a it's going to be in in all elements uh, of life you know the way that uh the internet was but uh probably more so because you know the internet can't um make a decision <laughs> you know the it can't do things for you you can't uh, um uh apply it in as many ways it, it can't uh interact with your information the way that, that AI can right so yeah you know as, as I was sharing with you guys uh, before we we started the, the the show um I was watching a Senate oversight hearing specifically on AI and, and that's how um um dominant this topic has become even within the halls of Congress 
And um, they brought in Sam Altman, who was the um, CEO of OpenAI, which kind of unleashed this whole thing on the world through a chat GPT, made it a, you know, a, a, an open tool for everyone to, to access. And one of the things that uh, he was saying was uh, he was encouraging uh, government regulation. And a senator remarked to him that th that was probably the first time he'd ever heard someone from business actually come before the Congress and, and encourage them to regulate their industry. Um, I want to get to both you and Jason to kind of respond to what your thoughts are on that. Uh, well, Jason, if you'd like me to go first. Uh, oh, no, I, please. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I agree with Sam. Uh, the uh, rate at which, uh, you know, AI is uh, improving is uh, not like anything anyone has ever experienced before. Um, it, it, it's uh, the, the iterative speed is is uh, kind of unfathomable. That, and, you know, getting regulation in place um, is going to be important. Um, you know, getting, uh, um, you know, it, it, it will be a really great tool for people. I'm very optimistic about it, but um, making sure that we keep it out of, you know, the wrong hands and, and that we have, you know, AI to protect us from AI <laughs> as well, too, um, if that makes any sense. But uh, that's sort of how it's going to play out. We're going to need to have a, a balancing system, you know, uh, and that's, I think, what uh, a lot of what Sam's talking about. I think that is a very, very good point, Christian, because like, you know, a, a lot of what you've seen traditionally with uh, with entrepreneurship in the tech space is, you know, like the unwritten rule has always been, you know, innovation above legislation. And, you know, just let us disrupt and let us iterate and let us create and let us, you know, do what's never been done before. And we are, you know, the modern day sorcerers and the alchemists of the world. So, you know, like, uh, you know, we can make stuff that you don't necessarily understand. And we'll just deal with, you know, the ramifications later. But but what we're seeing right now is Christian. So. Uh, so rightly pointed out is uh, the whole concerns about ethical AI really are being taken into very serious consideration because like you know um, like you said you know you don't want AI to basically um, take over like AI have uh, uh, disrupt itself and that that is that is a very very pressing need because if things should go completely sideways or you know get crazy they could shut this whole thing down. And so they want to kind of like have managed growth. Would you agree like Christian rather than say, you know, I mean, because like you said, you know, the exponential nature of this thing is even for those of us who've been on the internet for a long time, like we haven't seen, you know, um, uh, growth and adoption like to this level, maybe ever. I, I think maybe uh, I think, uh, the easy way to, to think about it would be, you know, we've been driving cars that go, you know, uh, you know 40, 50 miles per hour on the road. And now all of a sudden, uh, some company dropped a you know a couple cars on the island that go four thousand miles per hour. You know we we don't have the the framework right now to to deal with those vehicles. But if everybody starts buying them, there's going to be some some crashes. So um, you know it's uh, it's not anti tech to you know to say that we need to have a framework in place to regulate tech. I think it's just responsible. So. Okay, on that note, we got to take a quick break, but I want to come back and talk a little bit more about the ethics of, of AI because there was a, a, a guest from um, uh, IBM that was also at the Senate Oversight Hearing, and that's exactly what she was talking about. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back right after this. All right, everybody, we're back uh, from break. And um, before the break, we were talking a little bit about um, ethics. Uh, Jason, you brought that up. And uh, as I was uh, saying, mentioning uh, earlier, there was also a, a participant uh, uh, or, or a te someone testifying from IBM before that Senate oversight he uh, hearing um, yesterday who, who talked specifically about ethics. And in fact, that's her position at IBM is to oversee um, AI ethics. and. Uh, uh, Christian and, and Jason, what are your thoughts on that? Can you expound on uh, what you were talking a little bit about uh, before we took the break? Jason, well, let me start with you. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I mean, it's it's kind of like the, the whole way that AI works right now is, and, you know, it's all based on data sets, right? And you can have data sets for particular things. And Christian brought that up in, in the previous segment, how, you know, um, we don't really have... Um, general purpose AI right now that can solve any problem under the sun, you know, even as wonderful as chat GPT is, that's within the, the scope of 
generally text-based uh, language. You know, there are other types of AI models for uh, for creating images or working with video or you know doing all these mo um, uh, these modal things. Uh, but and as Christian also said, you know, reasoning is something that we're working towards, but we're not there yet. So um, making sure that we have you know as far as ethics, having the right data to put in uh, so you, that you don't poison. Um, you know, your, your data set so that the AI would actually produce inaccurate results, dangerous results, um, harmful results, confusing results, uh, things like that, and making sure that the people that will ultimately take this either from industry or from academia or from military sectors, you know, uh, know how to actually structure this kind of thing so that you can actually have a system um, that will perform the way that you want to. Because the other thing about these uh, deep learning, these neural networks models, is that they work off of what we call like black boxes, where you don't necessarily, if you're the designer, have every single line of code pre-written and you know everything that's going to happen. A lot of times these AIs just kind of take over and they learn on their own. Well, you know, Christian, you're the expert here. So like, would you agree? Um, very much so. Yeah. The uh, uh, the access to uh, those black boxes uh, is is out, though. You know, you can get into, um, you know, places like GitHub and uh, I don't want to go too terribly technical, but um, you can access that code and you can mess around with it. And um, you could pretty quickly find out that you just, you know, gave the entire world your bank account information or, you know, the, uh, we call them API keys, you know, keys that can control um, different websites and, and other uh, functions for you, um, you know, because you were trying to order something, you know, get get uh, your your auto GTP, which is, you know, kind of the, the next generation of um, chat GTP that uh, take takes action. Um, and so part of the regulation, I think, um, is going to, you know, involve safeguards for people not self-destructing, um, <laughs> you know, it, 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 which is pretty easy to do right now if you try and just kind of, like you said, you know, wild west it and, and, and go out on your own and, uh, and start messing around with some things. So it, um, uh, not necessarily just for the tech people, but also for, you know, teaching the public how to, uh, uh, you know, how to interact with it maybe needs to slow down just a little bit. Yeah. And one, one of the things that came up yesterday, too, was and one of the, the biggest concerns was the, the ability to um, create lifelike um, um, robotic persons, right, or uh, mimic your, uh, someone um, to make it seem as if that's that person. Um, and, and that that is a, a, was a very big concern because it, it could misinform the public. It could trick the public. It could. It could do a lot of uh, harmful things, right? Um, to put that kind of um, uh, image out there, and people believe that that, in fact, is that person who, when it really isn't, or create an, a person who doesn't really exist. Uh, what do you What are your thoughts on that, Jace? That's a, you know, that's a good, that's a good one because I remember when the whole, um, maybe a few years back, when the whole thing um, known as deep fakes, you know, that technology, which was which was based on kind of like the same principles as what we now see with the deep neural neural networks, and people are said this is all going to be used for nefarious purposes, and it's going to be, you know, um, Anne Hathaway's uh, face was was posted on a very uh, unsavory video, and you know, um, people are said this is going to be used to to frame people or to blackmail people, and I remember saying at the time I was like, well, you know that's probably going to be the case in very, very small edge cases. However, it's probably also going to be used for industry and things like um, major motion pictures and to uh, to further take CGI and, and go places that, you know, um, would be either really, really expensive or really um, time consuming to do right now. And we're starting to see that now. So I think it is kind of a um, uh, thought leaders like Christian and his group to actually uh, to educate the community at that phase one and then basically say, this is what's here right now. This is what's available with it. You know, what kind of pushback do you have? What kind of concerns do you have? So that you can kind of shape, um, you know, the future of your business around this. And I mean, certainly there are going to be companies that are solely based um, on large, large language models, on generative adversarial networks, and and uh, things like that. But basically, just figuring out what the true state of AI is, and realizing that for most applications, you're not going to be able to turn water into wine and, you know, walk on water like many people would believe. Yeah, Christian? Yeah, um, yeah, I, I agree with you. And and uh, that's where we're at right now um, uh, uh, as far as, you know, keeping it in a sandbox. You know, uh, the AI has, um, you know, very real uh, limitations, uh, you know, uh, 
that are given it, uh, you know, if you're going through, you know, the proper channels, open AIs, um, you know, different uh, web browsers, or, um, you know, there's, there's quite a few tools out there. Um, and it, 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 it keeps it um, within certain parameters. And the second that it, you know, it, that, it, that it comes out of that, uh, you know, then, you know, that that's kind of where people can get hurt and we're not really there yet. So now is the right time to regulate. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just responsible to uh, to grow the right way. All right, uh, we're gonna take another break, but when we come back, I'd like to talk a lot more about the positive stuff that could come out of uh, AI. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back yeah. in just a moment. Please stay with us. All right. Okay. We talked a little bit about before the break about some of the bad stuff that can happen, but you know, that's just a, a small part, I think of what um, this AI really means and, and all of the innovations that can result from this, uh, everything from medical breakthroughs to, you know, uh, all, all different kinds of um, new um, technology that come up, can come about because of, of AI. And Christian, so start us off, tell us about all the good things you think uh, AI is going to bring and, and how, uh, let's bring that home to Guam and how it, it might be able to, to help uh, folks here in Guam. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you want to start with uh, with healthcare, um, the uh, uh, the AI powered um, scans, uh, you know, that have been shown to be you know significantly uh, better than the at predicting melanoma, uh, you know, in the high nineties percent versus you know the best surgeons that are in the high seventies. Um, or, uh, uh, you know, the Da Vinci uh, Surgical from uh, uh, Intuitive Surgical that is formed, I think, almost 200,000 operations um, with absolute precision. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's great. You know, there's still a surgeon there. Um, you know, it, it's, not, it's not taking any job, but it's augmenting. Um, you know, and you brought up uh, IBM um, earlier, and the the, uh, the chairman of IBM, uh, the CEO, uh, had a good quote about it um, that it's not really uh, uh, replicating us; it's really more augmenting us. You know, it's going to be us with AI. We can do more, and that's been the the history of humanity. We've always had a you know a graph that is per person. Um, you know, the amount of work you can get, get, get done goes up over time. Uh, and this is going to be a significant increase, but, you know, that's, that's how the graph looks. If you go back to the stone age, you know, it's just been getting steeper. So. <laughs> Jason. And, yeah, there are some really cool, some really cool tools. And I, I do want to, um, give Christian's company, like some really, really, uh, due praise. Cause I was checking out your, your site, Christian, and, you know, um, a kind of like what's now known as kind of like the younger cousin of a full blown, you know, um, AI right now, like machine learning. And um, this technology has been around for a long time now, and this could possibly be used with some of the new techniques and a lot of the interest from business people and when it, with investment capital to possibly um, say the discovery of new pharmaceuticals, you know, at a much more rapid rate than would have been possible 20, 30 years ago. I mean, there is a, a possibility that people are talking about right now. Could you actually solve the common cold? you know, with, with these, you know, with data learning from data over time and much more data being um, being uh, available right now and being put to to good use and everything. And, um, you know, I mean, I'm I'm kind of on the older side of the scale, but I remember when, you know, the first iterations of AI were when the Madden video game, you know, when they said your opponent and the football team would learn how you play and then would get pro progressively better and it wouldn't just be, you know, running the same plays over and over and over. And it was data learning from data again um, and things like, uh, you know, there, there's a really cool web tool and the name escapes me right now, but you can actually take any song, upload that song to uh, to a web based tool and actually separate the track so that you can have the vocal track, the bass part, the guitar part, the drum part and everything like that. And all of that's learning from AI. So, I mean, it doesn't all have to be, uh, you know, smart bombs and self-driving cars and, you know, really, really high end applications. This can be used for, you know, uh, some pretty fun toys, too, and some for some very to, to very positive effect. Yeah. We would really like to, uh, you know, our main focus is bringing that technology to uh, small and mid-sized businesses. You know, the uh, the democratization of it. You know, not needing to have the budget of Google in order to uh, to have your benef business benefit from uh, AI is is what we are. I mean, that's our our, our main main goal here. Um, machine learning, uh, you know, is becoming a lot cheaper. You know, it's uh, as everything does over time. 
um, you know, to create machine learning processes that could help you predict how much um, revenue you're going to be uh, making in November, along with weather models and how much inventory you should be buying at what time uh, with, uh, you know, tourism data coming in and input all of that in. And it can tell you, you know, when to buy your strawberries uh, and when, you know, you should buy your Cadillac, you know. <laughs> OK, if, if I may, if I may, Ness, I, I want to ask uh, Christian, because, you know, the, the two kind of like applications that for, you know, for nerds like all the three of us who really, really enjoy this stuff. Right. The two um, kind of applications that people haven't been able to definitively crack. Right. Um, the stock market and sports predictions, because the X factor is always uncertainty uh, in your yeah. professional opinion. Um, where are we with, you know kind of like cracking that code. So, uh, so interesting. I, I am in both spaces. I, I do um, uh, run a small fund. Um, and so I have been messing around with uh, predictive AI for about two years now um, in, uh, in the market. Um, and it has some uses on um, uh, high frequency trading, you know, trades that are, that happen, you know, sometimes, you know, thousands of times per second, you know, that, that kind of thing. I haven't seen anything that that I thought uh, because, you know, the, the the thing about the stock market is as soon as you have an edge, um, then uh, uh, it gets washed out. Right. You know, the the uh, you have to constantly be be changing and um, people are able to do that. And and the stock market really is an emotional creature, um, you know, a, a day to day. It's um, it's emotion long term. Yeah, it, it does weigh the uh, value of businesses uh, accurately, I believe. But but on the short term, you know, you can't give it accurate data about a company and have that be what how people feel about that company, you know, that, on that day. So it's. Uh, yeah, it's not there. And I, I don't know that it ever will be unless um, people stop participating and people start having their AI, you know, avatars participate, you know, in which case the, that would change the game. There you go. Yeah. Chris, Kristen, you mentioned democratization. And I think that's a real good term because I think that was the whole purpose of what open AI was trying to do when they when they opened, opened up the chat GPT. So I wanted to ask you, I think for a lot of people, especially those who aren't quite, um, you know, haven't embraced it as much as probably you two have, um, there's 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 something very fascinating about it, and there's something very frightening about it, because we don't know what we don't know, right? So can, how can you uh, reassure um, the, the folks out there, uh, and I'll start with you, Christian, um, why this is a, a good thing, uh, is a, should be fascinating to them rather than frightening to them? Well, um, you know, it, it's we have to continue to progress as a society, you know, for 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 um, uh, us to continue to grow um, it. Uh, we need new technologies that that's just uh, um, the name of the game. We've got a lot of places in the world that are actually shrinking in population. So we've got a lot of work that's going to need to get uh, picked up by. Uh, by people uh, that are by someone and uh, you know people with AI are going to be able to do a lot more work than they used to um, you know never underestimate uh, human beings uh, ability to, to to want more so you know we're as soon as we have the ability to create more we're going to be wanting more and that's going to improve, improve everyone's quality of life you know now that we can uh, uh, do that and so everyone's quality of life will come up uh, with the uh, uh, productivity of people, um, and and that's that's what I firmly believe. I I'm, I'm not a doomsayer with it. I, I think it'll be uh, under control and 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 be put to work in a very positive way. So. And and Jay says so. Folks should kind of embrace what is the inevitable. Yes, and and I think they they should rely on on learned experts like Christian and you know and his colleagues to uh, to educate themselves and and to and to really like you know to challenge them to solicit you know the information that they need and say like this is the domain I'm in I'm in I may be in media I may be in banking I may be in auto sales I may be in um, you know uh, animated TV specials and everything like that I would like to do I would like to run my operations in a more cost efficient manner. Um, I would like to scale up my operation so that I can bring in more revenue and everything. And I realize that uh, that artificial intelligence, you know, is not Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator. It's a much more capable hammer or a screwdriver. I mean, it is a tool. And, and to understand that, I think, is the first step to realize that it can actually take uh, your operations, whether it, you know, it'd be doing homework, uh, you know, setting up a business, you know, running a law firm to the next level if you know how to actually 
apply it right. And I think that it, that kind of is the key. If you, if you just think it's going to replace, um, it's going to automatically displace you from employment and everything like that, you're probably thinking about it the wrong way. All right. Hey, Christian, we got about a minute left. So I want to give you a chance to kind of plug of your upcoming seminars and stuff you're going to be offering to the public. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So uh, the company is Outrigger AI. You can find us at outriggerai.io. Um, and that is short for input output. It is a, kind of a tech handle there instead of a dot com. Um, and uh, so our two goals are, are either to um, provide services that make you money or provide services that save you money. Um, if I can uh, you know, put it, put it as simply as possible. Um, there's a lot of tools out there. Uh, we make some tools as well, too. Um, but uh, we are all about, you know, the, the practical application of, uh, you know, getting these these tools in your hands. And they are surprisingly affordable. I, you know, all the customers that I've dealt with so far have been uh, um, uh, pretty, pretty shocked that, uh, you know, that so much can be done with so little. Um, and, you know, that's part of the reason why I'm, I'm so excited about uh, uh, the future of AI. Um, everyone's going to become a lot more productive. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, though, if you don't get on board, you know, you, you, you could find yourself in a position where you're left behind. Um, and uh, so we don't want that to happen to small and mid-sized businesses. You know. All right. That's Christian Clements of Outrigger AI. Uh, Jason Salas there, my colleague. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nestor Lacanto. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you again next week on The Hub.